Right now we're moving into our third week in this whole experience of social distancing and being a novel experience in the tiny house we thought we would share what we're up to. Yesterday I got to do a podcast interview for the Sustainable Savings podcast and um, it was a really interesting experience sitting down and really talking to somebody about the financial changes that have happened in our life since living in a tiny house and really decreasing our basic cost of living um, but also talking about how a lot of the things that we can do to save money and spend less are also really good for the environment it's a super interesting podcast that kind of talks about the things that exist at that intersection of financial responsibility and environmental responsibility because there are so many things that really check both of those boxes. So if you want to hear a little bit more about the story of how living in a tiny house really created an entirely different financial state for myself and also for Patrick. It was a a turning point for us where before we had the tiny house when we were living in traditional structures the majority of the money that we made every month went to paying a mortgage went to paying utility bills and just basic cost of living stuff food gas cars when you take your housing costs and you cut it in half or even less that makes a huge difference in what you can do with your money for us, one of the biggest reasons for doing that was that we just wanted to travel more. That was just like a, a life goal to increase our happiness and increase the experiences we get to have. I got the cover for the stove all painted with just like a regular flat white. And my plan for this was I took out our old map from when we were in Rocky Mountain National Park and I cut it into pieces that are going to fit on the top of the stove cover and then I went in and I marked the places that we actually got to camp when we were there so East Meadow and then when we were over on the other side at Mill Creek Basin that was where we almost got stomped by an elk but um, I'm gonna go ahead and stick the pieces of the map on and hopefully they fit well to have more money free at the end of the month so that we can travel and we don't do anything extravagant we go camping most of the time but it allowed us to also take a little bit more time off work so that we can do trips because that's the other thing you need the time and you need a little bit of the financial resources to make that happen um, and it's it was also the difference for me when I look back years ago when I still had student loan debt when I had a mortgage and all these other payments that I was making I was working average 50 hours a week um, and now that I'm out of debt I work um, when I'm not laid off. Um, I usually work about 32 hours a week and then I teach yoga on top of that which is really more of a an enjoyment thing than um, making money and paying the bills but that you can see the huge difference in the amount of time that I had to spend at work and also there's an impact on your health. When I was working 50 hours a week I was eating crappy food because I didn't have time to cook my meals at home I didn't have time to go to the gym and I was completely exhausted by the time that I got home. I would literally just be on the couch like recovering so that I could get up and go to work again the next day. Now that I have gotten myself into a position where I don't have to work as many hours, I have more energy to go to the gym, to exercise, to do all those things that require the time and the energy but are essential to take care of my health. So that is a super important part of this whole change of simplifying and minimizing. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I have to fix a couple more of the edges, especially down around this side with a few more layers to really seal it in, but uh, I think it looks good. Pretty happy with it. I think my plan for the inside, which is where I usually put food and stuff to bring it outside. So I want to play around with an epoxy, um, probably red because that's the theme color of the scamp. And that will give me a little bit of practice with it 
because this isn't a big deal if I mess it up, but then I want to refinish the table in the scamp. That's really what needs to be worked on. This was kind of just like my practice project to see how I like working with the uh, materials of the scamp. But I'll put one more coat of sealer on here and then I'll bring it over to the scamp and see how it looks. We're gonna go walk over to the scamp and drop off our backpacks and our sleeping bags because they just take up a ton of room in our storage loft. And then we'll have all our camping stuff kind of organized in the scamp. So when we do actually get to go, we'll be ready. There are the, the new tires. So we got both sides replaced and the spare replaced. And then what else did they do? They repacked the bearings. Bearings? Yeah. And uh, aligned it for us. Okay. Yeah. So eventually when campgrounds do open, we'll be ready to go. Good, Red. It's okay. Good. What? He gets in here no problem. Oh yeah. Yeah, see this is good. It'll open up space in the loft. Yeah. That's pretty good. Pretty neat, right? Yeah. And then there's the spots we went. We backpacked there. We backpacked there. And then you know what the funny one is um, on the side right there? So that's the Timber Creek campground. That was the first come first served campground that we went to after we drove over Trail Ridge Road. And I think that's actually the night <laughs> that convinced us to want to get a camper because that's when it was like super cold and we were looking at the people who were in their warm campers with their, their furnaces on and we were like, that looks nice. Why are we in a tent? So I thought it was kind of funny that we would have that saved in the scamp. Part of the story. All right, back to the tiny house. We decided a good quarantine activity today <laughs> would be to try to make bread. <laughs> I don't think, have we ever made bread in the tiny house oven? I don't think we have. Yeah. It's a first. It's actually thundering. It's weird. Alright, so. <laughs> it's like a meatloaf. It does look like a meatloaf. Now we have to let it rise for 45 minutes and then we can put it in the oven. I can't remember when I actually bought this package of gluten free bread mix. So I think it's uh, sufficient to say that it was pretty old and I think the yeast was dead because it didn't rise, but we put cream cheese and honey on it and it was edible. Here's my quarantine buddy. <laughs> He's pretty good at this. Right, Red? You don't mind having me home all day? <laughs> no. Get extra belly rubs. One of the things that we were really dreading about this whole experience was when they closed the gym. Because for us, being in the tiny house, we kind of use the gym as a little bit of an escape and we really enjoy the amenities of the gym. So we go and we do our workout and then we either go into the sauna or we go into the hot tub or something afterwards to kind of reward us for doing the workout and to really be able to relax. And it also gives us some time to kind of do our separate thing, um, especially if we've been around each other a lot. When we go to the gym, we don't work out together. Like Pat does his workout, I go do my workout, and we kind of just have a time that we meet up and then go and shower and then do whatever we we're gonna do after our workout. So when they announced that the gyms were going to close, we were both kind of like, uh, this is gonna be hard. Especially because right now is when we are usually doing a lot of strength training and cardio to get ready for the summer season, to get in shape for all the things that we do during the summer. When I had the tiny house built, 
we were concerned about this because at the condo I had a stationary bike and a lot more floor space to do yoga. I had weights and things that I would usually work out at home. Pat went to the gym at that point. Um, so when we were switching to the tiny house, I wanted options to be able to work out in the tiny house. I have to admit, I really haven't used them that much until now, but I'm really glad that I have them now. So what I did was I got these anchor hooks and I sent them to the builder and he anchored them into the steel beams that actually make up the frame of our tiny house. We have a steel framed tiny house, which is awesome. So I got these suspension training straps that I can hang from there. I have a yoga hammock that you can do exercises or you can just kind of hang out and take a nap, which Patrick likes to do regularly. Um, but these have kind of saved me at this point because it's still cold out. I don't really like working out outside when it's cold. In the summer it's great, but right now it's just not, not enjoyable. So this is pretty much what I've been using to substitute for my gym workouts. I'm gonna make my favorite afternoon drink. This is only something that I really get to do when I'm off work because it's just a little bit of time to kind of put all the ingredients together. The main thing is a very little bit of this matcha powder. And matcha is basically um, green tea leaves that are ground into a powder. Now the secondary ingredient that I really like is maca powder. And this is very different. It has a an earthy kind of sweet flavor to it. So I really like to add that to the matcha. Some flavor, I'm going to put coconut butter. Coconut butter is basically coconut oil and the full coconut puree in there. It gives it a little bit of creaminess. Scoop of honey. A few drops of hemp oil. I really like the hemp oil because it has sort of a, a nutty flavor to it and I just do a couple drops of that. And then on top of this mixture, I'm just going to pour the hot water. And then you just have to stir it really well. And the idea is the whole time that you're drinking this, you really need to keep stirring it so that the powder of the green tea leaves and the maca powder stay suspended in the water. If you let it sit for a couple minutes, it will start to settle to the bottom and then you won't actually be drinking all the stuff that is good for you. And that is just a little bit of cream. The funny thing is that Patrick used to take this mug to work with him when he worked in holding in the jail. When people would come in to get processed after they got arrested, he would be drinking coffee out of his Life is Beautiful mug. I always thought that was funny.